John 12:46 I have come as a light into the world that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. The world has become even further divided and spiritual warfare is off the charts. Both sides are polarizing. The good and the evil are parting ways in this difficult season that we find ourselves in. These times are challenging. Colossians 3:15 and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you were called in one body, and be thankful. The spiritual battle all around us is something that we need to keep in the back of our minds, lest the world distracts you from it. If we are conscious of the battle, we can discern better. The devil is having a field day right now with humanity, especially in light of recent events. As believers, today it is crucial to shine as lights in this world and remember that we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God were pleading through us for the lost to come to Him. There are lost souls that still need to come to Him to bring in the fullness of the Gentiles. It's just a matter of time. Remember the patience of the saints. Romans 12.21 do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. As we approach the tribulation, it is evident of the times we are in. Jesus told us that lawlessness would abound, and it's ugly to see it. Our Prince of Peace desires that we share in his peace. The assassination attempt in Pennsylvania was both shameful and cowardly. But that's how evil works. That's how evil is. When this happened, it was like someone flipped a switch. It was another spiritual shift. I ask that you remain focused on the goal, Jesus Christ. Stay grounded on the rock. What we witnessed was divine intervention. Regardless of your political views, you cannot dismiss this by saying it was luck. It was God. That bullet should have found its mark, but it didn't. Everything was working against this man, but God said no. The world would be a different place today if God did not have his hand in this. The Almighty has a purpose for this. God is in control, and once again he proved it, this time to the entire world. My thoughts and my prayers go out to all the victims of this incident. Matthew 10.3 Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Jesus was not referring to a physical sword when he said this. Remember that Peter was ordered by Jesus in Gethsemane to sheath his sword in Matthew 26, 51 and 52. Jesus told him, All who take the sword will perish by the sword. Jesus never contradicted himself. When he said he came to bring a sword, Jesus was saying that his message and gospel would cause division and conflict between people, even within families. It is apparent that Jesus was speaking of a spiritual sword. The spiritual sword riles up and antagonizes the forces of evil. He was referring to the spiritual battle between good and evil, which is really intensifying now. Luke 11.35 Therefore take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. Romans 12.19 Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Anger is the easiest emotion to have, and it is the hardest to shake once it takes a hold of you. If you are angry, I pray that Jesus releases you from its bondage. Anger is a lonely, weary place that no believer needs to take residence in and anger is a bottomless pit of misery. Draw close to Jesus and stay close to him. That's key today. Draw from his strength and take comfort in his peace. Psalm 37, 8. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. James 1, 20. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. God has this. He knows the future, and He is the Almighty. Submit to Jesus, and let all that surrounds you become shadows in His awesome light. God is in control, and evil hates it. Take the high road. 
Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus.